Explained by the Billy Meyer contacts. Mysteries, myths, legends, conspiracy theories, historical inaccuracies, and more. Compiled by David Chance, revised October 18, 2023. Tunguska Event 1908 Ask Its Explanations Part 1. 3rd February 1953. Wow. Less than 11.30 Earth years ago, three races capable of space travel from far galaxies of this universe dispatched their expedition ships and advanced to the Earth. They explored this world with small scout craft and also made contact with priestly Earth humans secretly and unrecognized in order not to spread terror and angst. They heard and learned from the Earth humans the insanity of their ideologies and religions and suddenly they believed themselves to be disadvantaged and falsely led in their own philosophy of creation and in their own evolution of consciousness and spirit. As a life form still very spiritually underdeveloped and underdeveloped in consciousness, the Earth humans were able to throw these foreign life forms into doubt and to sow discord among them. Yet, was that any wonder then, if it is considered that very highly developed life forms from foreign galaxies visit the Earth, and here suddenly are instructed that they, as a race which has developed very far, are to have been disadvantaged by creation, because, allegedly, creation personally made itself known to a still very underdeveloped race, and they themselves, as a much higher life form, were passed over. Where was the blame to be found here? That creation created its only begotten son and transferred him to earth to a poor, underdeveloped people and did not create this only begotten son for the much higher developed life forms. Thus this insane information was spread on three distant worlds and announced to the races which had, for thousands of years, lived in peace, love and in complete harmony among themselves and with all forms of life. The insanity of the terrestrial religions was taken up by scientists, and further expeditions were sent to Earth in order to work for years to investigate all required religious facts. After the return of these expeditions, it was concluded, after exact clarifications, that all peoples would be instructed according to the, the terrestrial Christian religion, and indeed, in all matters. This was a fatal error, because, within only eleven years, this peaceful humankind from a distant planet, having previously lived only by the creational laws, changed itself into the faith-based Christian image of the earth human. At first, fights and discord originated only in the narrower circles, then, however, everything expanded very quickly, and it came to public unrest. Already the life forms soon murdered each other, until everything degenerated into a malicious worldwide war. Finally, encroachments into the two other worlds resulted, one of which was then destroyed. Different spacefaring races became attentive to that and finally intervened and forcefully terminated the deadly discord, which had already slowly carried itself into the entire solar system. The terrestrial religions, brought there through the expeditions, and the destruction releasing Christianity were strictly forbidden to any life forms. All existing religious material was destroyed, and the old way of life again became the highest law. Any advance and any further visit to the earth was forbidden, and a decree was even issued that, if, unexpectedly, a ship should stray onto earth and no further possibilities of progress could be found, the entire crew, together with their ship, must totally eliminate itself. This actually also then soon happened according to the decree of this regulation, when a huge spaceship, still in the terrestrial area, was not able to free itself any more from Earth, where it had lain hidden for several months with severe technical damage in the country which you call Russia. The ship was able to lift itself up only a few hundred meters and then sank down again. In accordance with the regulation that no spaceships, and so forth, were allowed to approach the Earth anymore, 
all outside assistance was also impossible. Other races from outer space, stationed on the Earth, were, on the other hand, forbidden to bring the damaged ship assistance because, among the crew, a terrestrial epidemic had broken out which was very dangerous for this life form. In the knowledge that they could anticipate no more help at all, they designed an enormous bomb from the foundation stones of life that you call atoms, forced the ship as far as possible up into the sky, and then let it simply fall. Like an enormous comet, it fell towards the Earth, and before it could strike the Earth, at a few hundred metres height, the atomic bomb was ignited. An enormous explosion tore up the ship and the crew, turned everything to dust and destroyed the landscape. From everything, only a giant crater remained, which is erroneously called a meteor crater by your scientists. More than 4,300 life forms of extraterrestrial origin were destroyed during this gigantic destruction, which only leads back to the terrestrial Christian cult, because the actual reason for this destruction was the insanity of this terrestrial religion. Contact Report 365 my wish is that you explain what kind of spaceship the aircraft was, because it was something unusual. I guess you could say that. It's interesting that finally people are coming and talking about different things than they have been talking about so far, by some scientists who claim that the Tunguska catastrophe was caused by gas escaping from the Earth and exploding, etc. It is true as you know, that the event was caused by a spacecraft of alien intelligences, exactly according to Askett's description as you read it to me with the 86th to 95th sentence of Askett's explanations. The crew of the large space-flying apparatuses, which was destroyed over the Tunguska region in 1908 on 30th June, came from the Setkatis galaxy, a large spiral galaxy about 17 million light-years away, also known to Earth's astronomers, under the designation M101. The home of the astronauts was a planet of little more than Earth size and is called Catullus. It is a satellite of the solar system Blira, which includes two suns and 18 planets, but only three of them carry human life. The galaxy can be observed from the Earth from above, so to speak, but the Blira solar system remains invisible from the Earth because it is beyond observation. The crew members of the space-flying apparatuses belong to the Helis people, which is why we call them Gelaser. The Gelaser people were already very advanced in space technology at that time and were also able to build huge spacecraft using small planetoids. In these, they created large cavities, in which they placed equipment for propulsion, for powerful weapons, for external protective shields and electron collectors, as well as energy storage, living quarters, workspaces, food production facilities, and life support systems, etc. In other words, everything that was necessary. From the outside, it was not recognizable that it was a spacecraft because on the outside, the object remained what it basically was, namely a small planetoid. Its enormous weight could be calculated with about 179,854 tons, so what you read in the Tonline article is not close to the truth. It is very likely that the enormous explosion threw fragments of the outer thick planetoid hull and metal parts of the interior of the planetoid spaceship to Earth. And what else is to be said about the huge crater? It covered about 3,500 square kilometers. The massive explosion originated at an altitude of 1,190 meters. It is not a deep crater or whole crater, as it is created by a direct impact of a large projectile on the Earth, because the explosion at high altitude created a so-called horizontal crater. In a horizontal crater, the force of the explosion from above or the pressure wave depresses all the earth, as well as plants, animals, and at least the weak trees. 
The force of the pressure wave only forms a small bulge at the outermost edge of the crater, which can be thrown up from a few centimeters to 20 or 30 meters or more, depending on the energy of the pressure wave. However, such horizontal craters are only formed by large pressure waves from above and are usually not or only poorly visible, because the distance from the center of the crater to its rim is usually so far that the actual crater rim is difficult to find. Contact Report 428 The great spaceship, which at that time suffered a breakdown and was destroyed, out of which the so-called Tunguska event resulted, belong to a people who live in a distant galaxy in your space-time configuration. The Christianity, however, which was brought to their home worlds by some of their space travelers, and which rapidly spread out, led to grave religious wars. Once order could then finally be recreated, the space travelers were forbidden to make any further penetrations into the terrestrial space. Around 1,000 years after this decree, as a result of faulty coordinates, a large spaceship of these people got lost in the SOL system and stranded on the Earth due to a severe accident that was still occurring, from which it was no longer able to move away. So, for several months, the spaceship lay with grave technical damage hidden in the Tunguska region, whereby a larger number of space travelers mixed, unrecognized, among the Earth humans, far from the hiding place, and sexually engaged with them, which resulted in many of them becoming sick with syphilis, and with the return to their spaceship, also infecting many others with it. That had very bad consequences for the space travelers because very quickly, as a result of their constitutional difference, dangerous mutations of the disease arose which just as quickly expanded to a plague-like disease and epidemic which cost many their lives. They could not expect help from the home world because, according to the old determination, it was forbidden for them to approach the Earth. Apart from that, other extraterrestrials who were stationed on the Earth, namely us and our Confederates, were forbidden by the government of the home world to provide any help. Consequently, we had to abide by our directives. Therefore, only self-destruction remained for the foreigners to Earth as their determination demanded it. Consequently, they built an atom bomb, brought the spaceship to a still feasible height in the atmosphere, and then caused it to fall in order to then ignite the bomb. Through the enormous explosion, the great spaceship was completely ripped apart and torn to pieces, whereby the monstrous explosion transformed practically the whole ship and the entire crew of still 4,287 human beings into dust and ash. Everything was observed and recorded from our side. Therefore, we of course continuously relayed our information to the stranded space traveler's home world. However, we did not receive permission to intervene in the events. Therefore, we had to let things run their course. However, we relied on the fact that we could teach the government and the people of the space travelers in relation to the fact that for them, as long as they would no longer get involved in them, there was no danger anymore by the religions of the human beings of Earth. Our intentions succeeded in the course of time, which then also had the result that all three peoples, that is to say, races, namely there were three of them, joined our federation. They come from a region of a large cluster of galaxies, which is around 400 million light years away from the Earth. The three peoples, respectively. Races have three different home worlds, yet they are closely connected with each other and call themselves the People's Oneness of Bardan, as they also call their home worlds Bardan 1, 2, and 3, and have a common government. The Bardan belong to those five peoples foreign to Earth who I named to you and who have joined our Federation. And do these human beings come again to the Earth in the current time? And the galaxy cluster mentioned by you, is that also known to our astronomers? 
Yes, and indeed already since the time around 80 years ago, when they allowed themselves to be taught by us and joined our Federation. But since then they have never taken up contact with Earth humans. And with regard to the galaxy cluster, this is known to the terrestrial astronomers and is named Coma Cluster of Galaxies by them. And they look like us or different? They are human beings like us, if that is what you mean. They have somewhat Mongolian features and a somewhat coarse, as well as light brownish, yellowish skin. Contact Report 476 Contact Report 428 Supplement Private Conversation Well, dear friend, today you gave me different data. You seem to be messing with something, or then I misheard or misunderstood something. You have not misunderstood anything, just as I have not confused anything either. But it is still my mistake. Because I did not mention that all three peoples of Gilas emigrated from their original home planet Catullus in the system Blira, 17 million light years away from Earth, and settled 400 million light years away in the spiral galaxy in the coma cluster of galaxies M101. Their three new home planets they call Bardan, and consequently themselves now also Bardan. Aha, uh -huh. and why did they emigrate? A worldwide epidemic killed more than four or five of all Gilas within three decades, so the healthy survivors fled and sought new homeworlds, which they found with our help. In order to end the plague, which also affected all other life forms and was completely eradicated by them, the only possibility left was to burn up the entire planet's surface. Unfortunately, no cure or containment agent could be found or produced against the epidemic. And before you ask sooner or later what happened in the Tunguska region, I want to explain to you that the destruction of the planetoid spaceship also caused very severe Earth tremors, which caused the Earth to split open and released enormous gas masses, which led to further violent explosions, causing great destruction and also creating a new lake. So there was also an earthbound endogenous cause to the whole thing. But this was not the real origin, but only another multiple effect of the destruction of the space flying apparatus. However, we always spoke only about the exploded space flying apparatus, not about the further consequences. Contact Report 542. But now I have a question again which relates to an apparent contradiction. Because in the matter of the Tunguska catastrophe, those private conversations between you and I are not included in the official contact reports. When we talked about it on various occasions, you also explained that the three great planetary peoples, including the space travelers who exploded their spaceship over the Tunguska area, had left their old home and found three new planets far away. These were uninhabited worlds but they were suitable for them and they could use them as new home worlds for themselves. However, you have kept quiet about the details of how the whole thing works, which is why it is now necessary to go into them in more detail, because somebody has stumbled upon the fact that the 365th contact report in Volume 9 contains different information than the 428th contact report in Volume 10. At the 476th contact report, you then gave a further explanation. For me, the matter is actually clear, but not yet for a reader, probably also because she has not yet read the 476th report. Here, I have copied out four parts of the report, also one from Ascot. The whole thing may indeed appear to be a contradiction, and obviously it would have been necessary that we should have had our private conversations in this regard as official conversations and made them public. But what I've already explained in relation to this matter should actually make it clear what the facts are. But perhaps it was also unfortunate and confusing of me that I split one and the same factor into two parts and spoke of two different names of peoples, planets, and galaxies. If this has created an apparent contradiction, then this is regrettable on the one hand, but on the other hand it was unintentional. 
So now there is probably a need for me to state the relevant facts openly and in more detail in order to clarify everything. As a further and final explanation, I do not want to go into all the details, but only so far as to make everything a little clearer. After the heavy faith struggles, which were caused by the introduction of Christianity from Earth to the world population of the Gilasar on the planet Catullus in the system Blira in the galaxy Setkatis, also a planet was destroyed in such a way that life was no longer possible on it, after which a decree was issued that the Earth in the SOL system was no longer allowed to be approached. Christian delusion was strictly forbidden. But this did not stop fanatics from secretly continuing their Christian faith underground, which then came to the surface again 694 years later and spread again on both planets that were still habitable. This led to the emergence of various religious groups, respectively sects, and from these, new religious struggles that spread to both worlds and wreaked enormous destruction making the living conditions for the populations of the planets increasingly precarious over the decades. What now needs to be further officially explained is this. Again, after the catastrophe of the first religious war about 1,000 years ago, the Christian delusion continued to modernize in a secret underground way, and consequently, after 694 years, further religious fights arose, which could no longer be contained for about 300 years, and, moreover, spread to both inhabited planets and claimed millions of victims. These battles also caused severe destruction of nature and the atmosphere, and all but a few remnants of animal and plant life were also exterminated. Then it happened that an epidemic broke out on one of the planets, which spread to a worldwide pandemic, spread to the whole world, and finally also to the other planet. According to the terrestrial calendar, it raged for around three decades, with four or five of all Gilasar, respectively Giliner as they called themselves, falling victim to the epidemic on both planets. And consequently... When everything had progressed so far that both worlds would soon no longer be habitable, large space-flying apparatus respectively, large spaceships were built and sent out to various regions of the universe to search for and explore new habitable worlds. One of these space-flying apparatus was built from a meteor, and so it happened that about 1,000 years later a large Galazer space-flying apparatus came to Earth again the one that had been built from a meteor. However, this was brought to Earth due to an error caused by an unfortunate technical error of a coordinate device. And in the end, however, an attempt to repair another damage also resulted in a serious accident. And since they were forbidden to receive help from others to return home, and since we Pliaran and our Federation were also not allowed to offer any help according to their home worlds, and since they also had the order to destroy their large flying apparatus if it was no longer possible to return under their own steam, and since sectarian Christianity was once again taken over by the crew because it was infiltrated by Christian secret allies who had been able to operate secretly in the space apparatus for a long time, those who remained unimpressed by sectarianism followed this order. And that they followed the order to destroy the planet was not least because they were informed that the wars of religion had been finally ended and that there was a danger that those who had once again come to earth would once again bring disaster back. This was in the form of the Christian delusion of faith, which was again widespread among the crew of the space-flying apparatus. So it was feared on the home worlds that Christian sectarianism could be brought back again. The history of the situation and the Tunguska explosion is well known to you. 
but is that the Gillisser, respectively Gillanair, came to Earth in 1907 with their large space-flying apparatus, converted it into a huge atomic bomb, and then exploded it on the 30th of June 1908, high above the Tunguska region, killing 4,287 human beings. At the time they left, their home was still the planet Catullus in the Blira system in the Setkatis galaxy which I also explained at the 365th official contact conversation. However, during the time when the Gila Sir were on Earth with their large space-flying apparatus, the crews of another large research space-flying apparatus and with our help, calculated from the Earth, in the so-called Coma Galaxy Clusters, found a new system with three three uninhabited but habitable planets named Bardan-1, Bardan 2, and Bardan 3. The two homeworlds in the system Blira had become so inhospitable and almost uninhabitable as the third planet, which was destroyed to the point of uninhabitability, that the remaining populations of the two only poorly inhabitable planets had to be evacuated and brought to the Bardan planets with powerful emigration space-flying apparatus respectively. After that, everything was arranged within a few years to carry out the whole thing. The total migration to the three Bardon planets then took 11 years, according to earthly time calculation. Since then, the peoples of all three Bardan planets call themselves Bardans. Accordingly, at the 428th official contact conversation, I named Bardan 1, 2, and 3 as the home worlds of the old Gilasser, respectively Gilaner as Bardan and their peoples as Bardans, to which I also counted those who were stranded on Earth. This is precisely because I also connected those who had lost their way on Earth with the new name of the new worlds, which obviously led to confusion, which was not my intention and is to be described as confusing and a mistake. But since the Gilasser, with their large spaceship in 1907, still came from the system Blira, I also named their home planet Catullus, the home system Setcatus, the people Gilaner, respectively Gilasser, and according to their origin, also the human beings of the large space-flying apparatus in this way. Then I named the new home Bardan in the Coma Cluster of Galaxies, because those who were stranded on Earth belonged to the same people. Obviously, I should not have done that, even though those who strayed to Earth actually belonged to the Bardan people, who, according to earthly time, had finished their emigration to Bardan in 1926. However, in a private conversation with you, I obviously did not mention the whole thing extensively enough. The whole thing is actually a little confusing at first sight, at least for the first impression. But after your explanation, everything seems understandable to me when I look at it logically. I can remember that you mentioned some things once. But one more question regarding the abandoned and now hostile planets in the Blira system of the Setkatis galaxy. Can they once again bear life? Then regarding mistakes, I would like to say that no human being is free from making mistakes. And on the other hand, this also proves that you Pliaran are only human beings and not superhumans or the like, and therefore not perfect. And he who believes himself to be free from error, cast the first stone, so it has been said since ancient times. What you say hits the nail on the head, as you sometimes like to say. But regarding the two planets in the Blira system, both of them, as well as the third, which was destroyed to the point of hostility to life, were eliminated by the Gila six years after the end of emigration, because they had also become a danger for the Blira system and would have affected its order, because they were maliciously pushed out of their orbits during the war. But another question. The events of Tunguska were actually caused by the Gilans, respectively Gilaser, or just by the Bardans namely by a large spaceship which they made from a meteor which they took advantage of. So far, those earthlings are right who attribute the gigantic explosion to a meteor, but it is also assumed that it could have been an asteroid. However, they do not want to admit that it was a meteor converted into a spaceship, and that the explosion was an atomic bomb.
Contact Report 583. Now there are new things concerning the Tunguska matter, like the following which Achim Wolf from Germany has sent me. In Sim Yas Se Block 27, Billy talked to Pata about the so-called Tunguska catastrophe, or the nuclear explosion of the spaceship in 1908. Some reports and speculations on the internet come surprisingly close to the truth. There was demonstrable radioactive radiation at that time. Eyewitnesses even reported the shape of an object. Maybe the information is interesting for Billy. Example 1. The Baskir engineer and geophysicist, A.V. Solotov, examined splinters of trees that had survived the catastrophe by cutting them into annual rings, then burning them and analyzing the ashes. He found a general increase in radioactivity for the year 1908 by finding the radioactive isotope cesium-137 in the wood. Thermal damage to the trees, complex biological effects such as accelerated growth and somatic mutations, changes in the paleomagnetic properties of the soil, thermoluminescence of the rock, increased uranium content in trap samples, igneous rock, and anomalies on a global scale were detected. They are declared as consequences of the disaster. In the disaster area, the growth of pine trees with three needle tufts, probably a mutation as a result of the disaster, was concentrated. The flight of the alleged Tunguska object was observed over a large territory, even in places 500 kilometer from the epicenter. Over 800 eyewitnesses have been found over the years who saw the object and in some cases heard its sound. The Tunguska body was described flying from south to north. However, no agreement was found between the observations in the south and west and those in the east, because then the Tunguska body would have had to move on two different trajectories at different speeds. According to this, a constellation could result, according to which either a. The statements are not correct. B. It is two different flying objects. C. Or the body in question changed its flight path and speed. In the latter case, it would have had to move on a non-ballistic trajectory with changing azimuths and heights, which is impossible for a natural body. Kanzansev went a step further in his hypothesis of a nuclear explosion and said that an interplanetary spacecraft visiting Earth and using nuclear energy as its propulsion, for some reason crashed over the taiga, exactly where Kulik's expeditions had so unsuccessfully searched for the remains of the meteorite. Example 2. What happened in the summer of 1908 in Siberia? What event still puzzles the experts after more than 90 years? According to many eyewitness reports, on this last day in June, a brightly glowing object descended from the sky for about 10 minutes. It glowed in a bluish-white light and was usually described as tubular. As the body descended, a cloud of black smoke formed and a roar resembling cannon fire sounded. A column of light at least 20 kilometer high was also seen. The heat that caused the explosion was so intense, even at a distance of 65 kilometers, that a farmer tore off his shirt because he thought it was on fire. The shock was so strong that seismographs around the globe recorded unusual deflections. The explosion could still be heard 700 kilometer away. The article is interesting, but it will probably be of no use to the know-it-alls and doubters who will continue to cling to their confused ideas and conceptions.